for CSS. I'll start the recording so that you can have it, but still you want to get uh, pay attention and then uh, maybe ask some questions if you have any. I am loading. I'm going to load the children's story instead at this time. So uh, we can talk a little bit. I'm going to turn off all this tabs. Uh, okay, so with children's story, I, I already have this uh, style one CSS is sitting inside the CSS folder. That's why you got CSS forward slash double check that is in there. Okay, so I'm going to open that. Um, yesterday, we talked about selector. So all these are selectors. When you see this name, that is name exactly like the tag. We have h1 tag, h3 tag, paragraph tag. This, this is saying that this is how it's targeted. Right, so this this is a rule saying that the color should be red or the color should be what it what whatever this this RGB, RGB file is, it's going to apply to the matching tag. That's one way of applying your CSS. Okay, we're gonna talk about another way where you can uh, use the attribute class uh, to do that. So let's see in here. So, say I have some images here. If I want to apply some border radius to the uh, border color to the radius or border, uh, well, let's see. Uh, children's story, okay. Right now it doesn't have a border, but if I want to uh, target all my images and I say all the images should have border uh, to have whatever pixels. Uh, to have border have this color I think this comes in order when we talk about border there's gonna be so I don't remember how the uh, oh there we go so with the border you want to start with the you want to start with the uh, width of the border so I can say two pixels and the style of the border uh, I can say dash or solid or something and then the color of it uh, RGB color and I can change them here all right so that's going to give me color to border with the width and style that's dash there are different options it can be dash or solid or something hopefully it gives you some references if not I'll put the link in anyways now I have a solid I have a dash border for all the images I can make this a little bit bigger just to now, now it's very very thick. Now border radius is something else. Border radius. It's when you want to round the corner, we we, we use border radius. Uh, you can apply to all over. You can say border radius and it's all over 20 pixels. This is gonna apply to all four corners. It's gonna do that. Okay, all four corners. But if I just want to apply to one of the corners, I can also do that. I would say border uh, border top left radius instead and then it's gonna apply to just one corner and it's apply only to this corner on the top and if I want to apply to the other corner at the bottom I could do that too it would be border bottom right radius and then I'll be, I will be applying to two corners rather than or four of them and uh, it can change this to solid whatever and then it's a solid solid border now um, what if I want to apply some style to to a picture and then another style to another picture then this will apply this will apply to all images that wouldn't work okay say I want some images to have radius and some don't some have one color some have another color the way to do this is to use class, okay? So class work like this, okay? First of all, I have to give class value to the target. So in this case, I can say this image over here. Okay, so say this image over here, class, and I'll give it a name. I can name it whatever, okay? I can say, uh, style one okay and this one has class style two 
All right. Um, and now, if they have a class definition with it, then I do not have to use image because image will target all the image tags. Okay. In this case, I would I would say style one, but I can't just say style one because it's going to confuse the system thinking that that's a tag. There's no tag with the name style one. That's a random name that I came up with, right? So I have to add a modifier to say dot. Okay. So whenever I say dot in CSS, it's it's is is understood that I'm looking for a class name that is style one. So it's gonna look up and down, you know, and it's gonna say, is there a class I call style one? Okay, yes. Then I'm gonna apply that style to this tag in particular. All right. So in that case, this is going to apply to just style one and not all the images. So in that case, if I go back to here, it just applied to that one in particular. Okay. Now, if I want another style for style two, I have to create a separate one. And then I could say, well, this one should be dashed. All right. That one should be dashed. So I save that. And that one is solid, that one is dashed. This one has style one applied to it, this one has style two applied to it. Okay, now I go back to my CSS and I see a lot of repeating codes, right? This is the only line that I want it to be different, okay? And I'm specifying this twice. So in order to make, uh, to shorten my code, and this is called, um, uh, there's a special name for it, what is it called? Um, multiple class selector for multiple things. So I can use comma in between such as this. So anything that is common, I can I can do dot style one comma dot style two braces. So whatever that is in here, it's gonna share among style one and style two. Okay, so I could say these are common between the two, so I'll move those over. And I can save some of the repetitions. Okay, so in that case, this will apply to both style one and style two. This will apply to style one only. That's gonna apply to style two only, and the result will be identical. All right, now, since the class it's not attached to any tag, okay? I can do something uh, more interesting. See, style one, I can put this under image, but I could also put this under heading, under, under, under H3. I can also do that. There's nothing stopping me from doing that, okay? So when I create a definition called style one, I can apply to image, I can, I can apply to heading. Some of the definition may not apply, but I'm just gonna try and see what happens. Yeah, it, it got applied to that text too. Okay, so whenever you create a definition that it's a class, you can use it everywhere. Um, okay, any, any question at this point in terms of how class selector work? Okay, if not, I'll move on. So that's your class selector. Next, I'll talk about font, okay? Whenever you specify a font, say for instance here, let's see, I have some paragraphs. So uh, now that I know I don't have to apply things to a paragraph, I'm going to call this paragraph uh, class uh, p style or paragraph style one. Okay, so paragraph style one. I would create the name first and I'll copy and paste to here dot p style one so that would be targeted and whatever I said here would be there okay so I can say font it's called font family or you can go font size that would be the most obvious thing right you can say extra large and then that paragraph would have extra large font uh, p style what does it say oh maybe okay so let's see if that's showing up yeah so that is bigger now under the match stick I'm gonna apply to this somewhere higher so I don't have to scroll down that far. You can to be sure. Okay, so uh, okay, so it's applying to here, so you can see it's making the font bigger. Um, usually, what people will specify is the font family. Oopsie. So the font family. 
phone family are looking like this. This would would look weird. There, there, there are always multiple fonts, and sometimes you see quotation around. So this quotation it's applied if the phone name is more than one word. It's gonna need the quotation. If the phone name is uh, just one word, say. Uh, this type new Roman is multiple words. You need the quotation. This times and sharif, these are just one word. Therefore, you don't need quotation. So these are identical to this font family that you choose here. So whatever that is that is that is available here you could probably apply to. However, you guys know that this font family are actually a font file that is that is in your computer. If your computer does not have that font file, it does not apply. Okay, and that's why when you specify your phone family here, it gave you not just one but three. This is to make make sure that it's going to try to use the phone call Georgia. If that phone file isn't available, it's gonna go for choice number two, choice number three, choice number four, so on and so forth. Okay, so when you design your your web page, you might be imagining that hey, I have this really good looking font which I have but when people view it on their device they're gonna see completely different things because they don't have that font file all right so in order to resolve the difference there's something called Google font so Google font is the font file that is sitting on Google server and you'll just be referring to it right as long as this 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 file is now view offline if it's view online there's always gonna be internet connection to retrieve that font file come back display on your web page so when you design it and people see it it's going to be exactly the same okay how to do it how to do it so this is the way to do it without the google uh font with google font it's going to be similar but with a link okay so i'm going to show you how to do it that link well what is that oh that's just a a walkthrough but you could you can just google to google font okay i should maybe give you a link to that okay just so that you have it and this is the video okay anyways now with google font this is how you do it so you can select whatever font some of it is you know in multiple languages you can search for whatever font if you want to search for you can use their tools how big it is but i'm just gonna search a particular one that look okay so i'm gonna choose uh maybe a fancier one maybe this one railway okay so i'm gonna select on it and then i can select this style if i like this style sure select this style okay now it says railway and send whatever i can select multiple fonts apparently and over here i'm selecting two i think i can remove this can i yeah i can remove that hello david so in this case this is the link and i'm just gonna stick with the link okay so you have two pieces of code okay this piece of code is goes to html this piece of code goes to CSS. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy this, copy this whole thing to HTML, and it's gonna place in head section. So this is all your resources coming. They don't actually show on your web page, but they are gonna they're gonna link to uh, Google server, font server, and then it's gonna retrieve that real way font. Okay. Now we have that resource available. How do you apply to it? It's here, phone family. Okay, we went through phone family tag. Just gonna paste in here, phone family. Done. Done. Okay. And now you go here. It's gonna use that phone family. All right. And it's gonna look exactly the same either on your side or on 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 someone else's computer when it shows on the device because it will all be going to Google and look for that phone and therefore it looks the same everywhere. Question on phone family before we move on? No, all right. Um, now, in that case, if you are sure, you, I, I think it's still safe to, to mention like a second or third choice, just in case that this is not viewed online, then it's gonna go with those choices. 
uh, class selector, we talk about this, uh, how to use borders, you have some samples, uh, background, um, These are some, uh, oh, if you don't want the border to apply everywhere, you can specify border left, border right instead. So in this case, I can say border left in, instead of border, and this is just going to apply to one side. It looks odd, but you can do whatever you want. Um, what else mentioned in saying? Um, oh, yesterday we did like hover. I think hover is kind of interesting. You can do hover on the uh, images as well. Let me show you how that goes. Uh, well, anyways, I kind of lost the, oh, I still have it here. Still have it here. All right. But where did it go? I accidentally removed that Google font, but you know how to do it right now. Oh, right here, right here. Sorry. Okay, that's better. Hover, hover. So yesterday we did this hovering on the link, right? On the link. So that still works. Hover on the link. You can also apply that to a uh, picture as well. So you can say, when I hover on images, it's gonna have a background color. I don't know if it's gonna, how, how well it's gonna show. Let's test. Uh, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, there we go. It's IMG, not IMG A. Okay, do you see that? So it's showing in here when it's dashed, it's not showing here because it's not seen through. But, um, it certainly have that effect going on. Um, there are also other things that you can do. You can make it show bigger, but I think we will not see those until next one. We can make things. Like a transform or something to make it look bigger. Anyways, I will put those images. Uh, I will put those code in for you. I just have to look it up. Can do some transition. That would be fun to do, but we can save that till later. Okay. So, oh, for what what do you, what to do for part B? You're gonna create two styles for paragraph uh, with class selector, two style for images with border without border, uh, for text highlighting, and for uh, Google font and two different style two different style sheet too. All right, so for two, two different style sheet, you have to create an, another CSS file where if you were to uh, switch which CSS to use, then your entire web page will look different. All right, I'll stop the recording.